So all my Hebrews and Hebrews, this is Oil Field Disciple, and we are eating our daily bread. Today we will be reading Genesis chapter 2, Psalms 2, Matthew chapter 2, and Proverbs 18. <coughs> um, like I said yesterday, um, this is mainly just reading the word, getting it in us. I'll do uh, minor commentary, um, but we're... Um, we're just going to read the word and we're going to allow the word to get in us like a good medicine. And so I pray that, that y'all enjoy this reading. I pray that it would inspire you to, um, to begin doing the 10 club, um, daily, um, which is three chapters of old Testament, three chapters, new three Psalms and the proverb. Um, uh, um, but for, um, time purposes and and what we're doing here um this will be the four club and so feel free to share my videos um if you're not subscribed to my channel please do so if you enjoy the content uh, go over and after you subscribe go click on the bell and that way you will get notifications for any new videos i make um, and so with that let's get started with genesis chapter 2 Verse 1, thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their array. And in the seventh day, Elohim completed his work, which he had done. And he rested the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Okay, before I get too, too far going in here, I read from the scriptures Bible. Um, it reads similar to King James, if... You took the King James word and went and, and looked it up in the Strong's. It also keeps uh, the Hebraic names um, as they as close as they, they can be um, without translating them into uh, the English modern names. Um, like, like in the King James book, um, the name James is actually translated from Jacob or Yahob. And so... Um, and here you'll hear me, if you're new to this channel, you'll hear me use the, the name Elohim or Yahweh or Yeshua. Elohim is Lord. Yahweh is God. And Yeshua is Jesus. And so, just let me clarify that and let's get, get to it. All right. Verse 3. And Elohim blessed the seventh day and set it apart because on it he rested from all his work, which Elohim... In creating had made these are the births of the births of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that Yahweh Elohim made earth and the heavens now no shrub of the field was yet on the earth and no plant of the field had yet sprung up for Yahweh Elohim had not sent rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground but a mist went up from the earth and watered the entire surface of the ground, and Yahweh Elohim formed the man out of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils breath, breath of life, and the man became a living being. Notice Yahweh breathed into his nostrils. He did not give him mouth to mouth. He breathed his spirit, his ruach, into man here. And Yahweh Elohim planted a garden in Eden, to the east, and there he put the, the man who he had formed. And out of the ground, Yahweh Elohim made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, with the tree of life in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divided and became four heads. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one surrounding the entire land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. Gillum is there. And the Shohan stone. <coughs> and the name of the second river is the Gihom. It is the one surrounding the entire land of Cush. And the name of the third river is the Hedekel. And is, it is the one which goes toward the east of Asher. And the fourth is the Euphrates. And Yahweh Elohim took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to guard it. Second note, man was created to work. 
work is not a product of man's fall, but man was created to work. Verse 16, And Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, saying, Eat of every tree of the garden, but do not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For in that day you eat of it, you will certainly die. And Yahweh Elohim said, It is not good for man to be alone. I am going to make him a helper for him as his counterpart. And from the ground, Yahweh Elohim formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living being, that was its name. If we look forward here, we are looking. Those are buffalo. Those are not cows. Um, those buffalo are going to breed together. That seed will produce more buffalo. We're not going to get... Um, crazy offspring when we breed buffalo to buffalo. Now, there's variations in kinds, and that gets into depth. But let's eradicate the idea of, of evolution in our minds. Let's eradicate the idea that the earth is millions and millions of years. Six literal days, 6,000 years that we are approximately away from the time Adam was created here in the garden. I just want to iterate that because I, I, I really get frustrated with people in their millions of years. I get frustrated with people and God created this and he could have allowed evolution to take place. No, he's given us specifics on how he did this. <clears throat> so the man gave names to all livestock. Verse 20. So the man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens. And to every beast of the field, but for the man there was not found a helper for him, as his counterpart. So Yahweh Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall on the man, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh in its place. And the rib which Yahweh Elohim had taken from the man he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And the man said, This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. This one is called woman. Because she was taken out of man. For this cause, a man shall leave his father and mother, cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, yet they were unashamed. That was a quick chapter. On to Psalms, chapter 2. Psalms chapter 2, Tehillim in Hebrew. Why do the nations rage and the peoples meditate emptiness? The sovereigns of the earth take their stand and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his Messiah and say, let us tear apart their bonds and throw away their ropes from us. He who is sitting in the heavens laughs. Yahweh mocks at them. Then he speaks to them in his wrath and troubles them in his rage, saying, But I have set my sovereign on Zion, my set-apart mountain. I inscribe for law. Yahweh has said to me, You are my son. Today I have brought you forth. Ask of me, and I make the nations your inheritance and the ends of the earth your possession. Break them with the rod of iron, dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel, and now, be wise, O sovereigns. Be instructed, you rulers of the earth. Serve Yahweh with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the chosen, lest he be enraged, and you perish in the way. For soon his wrath is to be kindled. Blessed are all those taking refuge in him. That's where we need to be today. We need to be taking refuge in the Most High, Yahweh. Um, Our kings need to be looking towards Yahweh for answers. Um, I'm not saying don't be um, don't be foolish and and let's not use our modern medicine when necessary. But we put too much faith in our own ability and not enough faith in Yahweh, and we sure don't fear Him. 
Um, and that is what we need to get back to is fearing Yahweh. And so, over to Proverbs chapter 18. We read Proverbs chapter 18 because today is the 18th. I'll reiterate this for a few days until, you know, um, I'm sure that my, my, my steady listeners understand it. And then I'll reiterate it every few days um, for any new listeners that may come on. Um, like I said, feel free to share my videos um, The more we can get the word out, um, the more medicine we can do to the, our culture. <clears throat> Proverbs 18. The separatist seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound wisdom. A fool does not delight in understanding, but in uncovering his own heart. When a wrong one comes, scorn comes too. And with shame comes reproach. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The fountain of wisdom is a flowing stream. It is not good to show partiality to the wrong or to turn aside the righteous in right ruling. A fool's lips enter into strife and his mouth calls for blows. A fool's mouth is his ruin and his lips are the snare of his life. The words of a slanderer are like delicacies. And they go down into the inner parts of the heart. Also, he who is slack in his work is a brother of a master destroyer. The name of Yahweh is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. And like a high wall in his own imagination. Before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty. And before esteem is humility. He who answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame to him. The spirit of a man sustains him in sickness, but who does bear a broken spirit? The heart of the understanding one gets knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. The first to state his own case seems right until another comes and examines him. The lot settles disputes and separates between mighty and a brother transgressed is a strong city. And contentions are like the bars of a citadel. A man's stomach is satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. He is satisfied with the increase of his lips. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those loving it eat its fruit. He who has found a wife has found, a, found good and receives favor from Yahweh. The poor speaks beseechingly, but the rich answers fiercely. A man of many friends might come to ruin, but there is a loving one who sticks closer than a brother. All right, the last part of that is, is really what we're dealing with today, too. Um, verse 22, he, has found, he who has found a wife has found a good thing. We men in this, in this culture, we have taken advantage of that. We have taken and destroyed that. You know, all we want to do is seek our own lust and pleasure when it comes to women. And even those who, who come into the marriage bond of the covenant and have a family, they're dropping the ball. That's why we see the culture where it's at today, because men are dropping the ball, um, which is it, it could be where we're at with this coronavirus. You know, God's going to God's going to bring us back together if he has to. God's going to bring us back to him if it takes breaking us in the process. I forgot to. uh put my phone on do not disturb so i really hope we get through this without getting interrupted if not at this point we'll just make part two matthew chapter two ain't too long <clears throat> so matthew chapter two and then we'll be done and yeshua having been born in bethlehem of yehuda in the days of herodotus the sovereign see magi from the east came to jerusalem saying where is he who has been born Sovereign of the Yehudim, for we saw his star in the east and have come to do reverence to him. And Herodias, 
the sovereign, having heard, was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And having gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Yehuda, for thus it has been written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Yehuda, you are by no means least among the rulers of Yehuda, for out of you shall come a ruler who shall shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herodias, having called the Magi secretly, learned exactly from them what time the star appeared. And having sent them to Bethlehem, he said, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring word back to me, so that I too might go and do reverence to him. Yeah, okay, Herod, you liar. Verse 9, And having heard the sovereign, they went, and see, the star which they had seen in the east went before for them until it came and stood over where the child was. And seeing the star, they rejoiced exceedingly great joy. And coming into the house, they saw the child with Miriam, his mother, and fell down and did reverence to him. And opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream that they should not return to Herodias, they departed for their own country by another way. This is where we get that fallacy of, of the three wise men during uh, this, um, this Christmas that, um, that likes to be celebrated. There, nowhere does it say there's three wise men. There's just three gifts here. Um, and so that, that is a fallacy that I could teach on another time. But just note that. Verse 12. Again, and, and having been warned in a dream that they should not return to Herodias, they departed for, for their own country by another way. And when they had left, see a messenger of Yahweh appeared to Yosef in a dream, saying, Arise and take the child and his mother, flee to Mitzrayim, which is Egypt, and remain there until I bring you word. For Herodias is about to seek the child to destroy him. And rising up, he took the child his and his mother by night and departed from its reign and remained there until the death of Herodias to feel what was spoken of by Yahweh through the prophet saying, Out of its reign I have called my son. Then Herodias, having seen that he was fooled by the Magi, was greatly enraged and he sent forth and slew all the male children in Bethlehem and in all its borders from two years old and under, according to the time which he had exactly learnt from the Magi. Then was filled what was spoken by Jeremiah, Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and weeping in great mourning, Rahel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted, because they were no more. And Herodias, having died, see a messenger of Yahweh appeared in a dream, to Yosef in Mitzrayim, saying, Arise and take the child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for those seeking the life of the child are dead. And rising up, he took the child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But hearing that Archelaus was reigning over Yehuda instead of his father Herodias, he was afraid to go there. And having been warned in a dream, he departed to the parts of Galilee and came and dwelt in the city called Nazareth, thus to feel what was spoken by the prophet. He shall be called a Nazarene. You notice when the heads of state are wicked and um, wicked and vile, they begin slaying children. Um, we in this culture happen to be doing it in the womb. Um, Herodias was waiting for him to be born and then slaying him. Um, either way, it's murder. And um, it's just it's saddening to me that um, people fight so hard to kill that innocent child in the womb. I don't get it. Women scream and holler, my body, my rights. Well, here in America, we have a constitutional republic. And in that constitutional republic says you have the right to the pursuit of happiness. 
as long as it does not infringe on another individual's rights. So if you are my body, my choice uh, mentality, you have the right to pursue the happiness, but now you're infringing on another individual's rights. How is that even right? How is that plausible? You have been handed over to a debased mind, uh, plain and simple. And that's all I will say about that. Um, and so um, thank you all for joining me um, for a, another, for the second day of our daily bread. Um, I really, uh, I hope you all um, are getting something out of this. Feel free to comment in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell um, so you get notifications when I make new videos. And share my videos. Um, let's see if we can grow this channel and glorify y'all in the process. Y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and always be frustrated. This is Oilfield Disciple, and I will catch you on the next ride.